What's the notion of anticholinergic drugs? What's the parameter of their study? What all drugs are to be included? What are the other names to designate these agents? You question today and I'm gonna answer this interrogation round. Cause I want it that way. Welcome all to Is Pharmacology Difficult Podcast. I'm your host Dr. Radhika Vijay, MBBS MD Pharmacology and this is the audio hub to get the best simplified basic tips, strategies, methods and lots of ideas to learn better, understand better and make your concepts crystal clear. If you rarely find and if there's a question hovering in your mind, is pharmacology difficult? Lend your ears for a while and let in the magic of knowledge. Key to the query. Hmm. Anticholinergic drugs are the ones that block the acetylcholine effects. Actions on the autonomic receptors in the central nervous system. And mind it, I am talking about only the actions of the muscarinic receptors, not nicotinic. Drugs antagonizing the effects of nicotinic receptors, they form the school of study as blockers of the ganglia and also as neuromuscular blocking agents. To name a few, I have a long lively list of drugs but to break the ice, let me tell you that atropine is the important hallmark drug to account for. And that's what we call the prototype drug. Another notable point, all anticholinergic drugs by nature of mechanism block the receptor competitively. I hope you remember the concept of competitive antagonism. Plants of solidacy family, they harbinger the production of natural alkaloids. And these natural alkaloids, they possess the atropinic properties. There are both levo and dextro isomers. But levo isomers, they are much more active forms. For your utter beneficial information, atropine is racemic in nature. Yes, it's a combination of levo and dextro forms. Another important natural alkaloid to know is the levohyoscine. And levohyoscine is better known as copolamine. Atropine derives its origin from Atropa balladona, which is in layman language known as the deadly nightshade. Another origin plant of atropine is Datura stramonium, which in layman language is known as the thorn apple, or at some places it's also called as the jimson wheat. Now, l hyoscyamine it is racemized and then it becomes commercially available as atropine. Scopolamine, l hyoscine it derives its origin from hyoscyamus niger. In layman language, the plant is known as henbane. Another plant of origin of scopolamine is scopolia carniolica. Now these are the two important natural alkaloids, atropine or another name DL that is racemic mixture of hyoscyamine that is commercial atropine and the second important natural alkaloid is scopolamine or l hyoscine Let's come over to our next group of drugs that form the school of study of anti-muscarinic or anti-cholinergic drugs. These are the semi-synthetic derivatives. They are partially derived from the natural alkaloids and partially they are synthesized. Now this list starts with the drugs like atropine methonitrate, then hyoscine methyl bromide, hyoscine butyl bromide, homotropine and all of its salts, benztropine and ipratropium bromide and thiotropium bromide. Yes, these are some weird names of the semi-synthetic derivatives that fall under the grouping of anti-muscarinic agents.
and lastly to comment upon the last group of drugs that falls under the anticholinergic agents are the synthetic derivatives they are purely synthesized and this is a long list yes you can take down your pen and paper and write down though you might mess up with some of the spellings because they sound really different but then okay you can just give it a good try the midriatics that fall under the synthetic derivatives they are cyclopentolate and tropicamide drugs for the parkinsonism disease they are procyclidine trihexyphenidyl which is also known as benzhexol and biperidine next group in the synthetic derivatives is the drugs which are highly selective for their action on the receptors on urinary bladder these are flavoxate oxybutynin tolterodin darafenacine and solifenacine next are the group of agents that serve as the function of anti-secretory and anti-spasmodic medicines now these can either be quaternary compounds chemically drugs like oxyphenonium, propantheline, clydenium, cymetropium bromide, isopropamide and glycopyrrolate. All these are quaternary compounds as far as their chemical structures are concerned. Or they can be tertiary amines chemically, drugs like dicyclamine, pirenzepine, telenzepine, valathamate. So this is a long list of lot many groups of drugs that fall under the synthetic derivatives for the anticholinergic drugs. And lastly, before I wrap up this short episode of the day, let's talk about pharmacokinetics. Yes, pharmacokinetically, I have few comments, especially on atropine. It cannot easily cross the blood-brain barrier. It is very nicely absorbed from the gut and its metabolism occurs in liver. Contrary to this atropine, another drug, another natural alkaloid that I talked about is hyoscine. It has a better movability across the blood-brain barrier and it is also available as the transdermal patch dosage form. Hope you remember that too. Then as far as specifically talking about the absorption of these drugs, atropine, scopolamine, etc. I told you they are very nicely absorbed from the gut and they can easily move across the eye membrane that is conjunctival membrane also. As far as specifically talking about the distribution, most of the anti-mascarinic drugs they are widely distributed but the exceptions are few of the quaternary compounds. Scopolamine has a rapid and complete distribution, especially in the central nervous system. And there it shows its maximum effects. Specifically talking about the metabolism of these drugs, 50% of atropine and about 80% of scopolamine, they are metabolized in liver, I've told you that, as conjugates. Now, there are some of the animal species like black rabbits. They possess a specific enzyme, atropine esterase, and because of this, they are highly resistant to atropine actions because this atropine esterase, it degrades the atropine at a very fast rate as compared to all of us. And lastly, specifically talking about the excretion of these drugs, almost half of these are excreted unchanged via the urine and especially as far as atropine is concerned, its effects are very short-lived except in the eye. In the eye, the effects may last up to three days or even longer. And they have a lot of ophthalmic users for the same reason. Okay, now that was an interesting short episode and a very interesting information. As far as the introduction of anticholinergic drugs, their names and a little part of their pharmacokinetics is concerned. And there's a lot of information awaiting in the upcoming episodes. But 
It's not the time to open the whole of the Pandora's box. For all the updates and latest episodes of my podcast, do visit www.islamicologydifficult.com where you can also sign up for a free monthly e-newsletter of mine. It actually contains a lot of updates about medical sciences, drug information updates, and my podcast updates also. You can follow me on different social media handles like Twitter, Insta, Facebook, and LinkedIn. They all are with the same name as Pharmacology Difficult. If you're listening for the first time, do subscribe and follow whatever platform you are consuming this episode. Stay tuned. Do rate and review on iTunes, Apple Podcast. Stay safe. Stay happy. Stay enlightened. Thank you.